Good day, Louis and Gems. This week's lesson focuses on evolution and how changes over the course of time have brought about the emergence and diversification of the species. For this lecture, I am Mr. Nestor Jr. C. Manilin, your lecturer. Take note that all species of living organisms, from bacteria to monkeys to blueberries, evolve on some point from a different species. Although it may seem that living things today stay much the same, that's not the case. Evolution is an ongoing process. The theory of evolution is a unifying theory of biology, meaning it is the framework within which biologists ask questions about the living world. The Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. For these long years of rapid changes, what do you think are the reflections of history in this present time? The planet we call our home has undergone a series of geological and biological challenges that have changed not only its landscape, but also its inhabitants. By studying the Earth's geological timeline, we will be able to trace the process by which fossils and living organisms have evolved since the time that life appeared and until the present day. So before we dwell with the events during the ancient times, it is very important to know the pattern modifications with the use of a geologic time scale. What is a geologic time scale? So geologists can trace the history of Earth back about 4.6 billion years from its formation from a ring of gas. So the geologists divided this vast span into intervals that formed the basic yardstick of geologic time. So the division that geologists did is used to monitor the events that happen from the creation of Earth or to trace the history of the Earth. So succeeding generations have changed the names of some and calibrated them in years to produce a geologic time scale. So the basic function of this geologic time scale, it is a means or it is used to measure the history of the Earth. So let's start with the largest interval unit into which geologic time is divided, which is the eons. So eons, there are four geologic eons. The first three is the Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic eon, which is frequently lumped together and referred to as the Precambrian eon. And lastly, we have the Phanerozoic eon. So in this chart, you can see that uh, in the events, Proterozoic Eon has the greatest number or the greatest span of time, and the list is in the Phanerozoic Eon. Well, let's start first with the earliest known eon, which is the Hadean Eon. So it is the oldest interval in time and stated from 4,600 million years ago to 3,900 million years ago. So no rock record dating from the Hadean Eon is known. So there are no uh, records on rock in this eon. And except for the 3.96 billion year old rock, which is found in Canada's Northwest Territories. Although uh, rocks on other planets in the solar system were possibly deposited during, deposited during the Hadean Eon. Uh, earliest life forms are found in rocks dating from the Archean Eon. So in this Hadean Eon, uh, there is a possibility or a no, there are no possibilities that uh, there is already formation of rocks. So we move on to the next Eon. We mentioned a while back that earliest known life forms are found in rocks dating from the Archean Eon. So, oldest rocks known on Earth 
were deposited during this eon. And the Archean eon is also referred to as the Archaeozoic eon. So that is another term for the Archean eon. Sedimentary rocks deposited in the oceans during the Archean eon contain microscopic life forms. So from here, we can already say that uh, the earliest life form is evident in this eon. So these organisms were among the only living things on Earth for over 1 billion years. And last, under the Precambrian Eon, we have the Proterozoic Eon. So rocks deposited during the Proterozoic Eon include evidence of multi-celled organism. Remember that in the Archean Eon, it is a microscopic life form that have bacterial characteristic for Archean. But in Proterozoic Eon, there is already an evidence of multi-celled organism. So, the stromatolites remain common in the shallow water of Proterozoic Eon. However, many other living things were present such as Archaea that live in extreme habitats where the water was very hot and extremely salty. So that is for the Proterozoic Eon. And we have the Phanerozoic Eon. So it began for from 540 million years ago and continues into the present. So that is our current Eon. The rocks deposited during the Phanerozoic Eon contain evidence of fossilized hard body parts of modern living things. To sum it up under Eons, take note that in the Hadean Eon, it is known to be the oldest interval of time. Under Archean Eon, there is already an evidence of microscopic life forms that have bacterial characteristics. Under Proterozoic Eon, evidence of multi-celled organism. And lastly, in the Phanerozoic Eon, it contains evidence of fossilized hard body parts. We move on to ERA. ERAs are the next largest interval unit. ERAs encompass major intervals of time and are defined based on the fossil life forms found in the rock layers and the law of superposition. So the Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic eons do not have recognized ERAs. So only the Paleozoic era the Cenozoic Era and the Cenozoic Era is under it. So Cenozoic is known to be the new life, Mesozoic to be the middle life, and Paleozoic known as the old life. So this era is under only the Phanerozoic Eon. Each of the names of the eras reflects the relative stage in the development of life. So as you can see, Paleozoic Old, Mesozoic Middle, Cenozoic New Life. Let's start on the first era, which is the Paleozoic Era. The Paleozoic Era, also known as the Old Life, is the oldest of the three eras. And during the Paleozoic Era, multi celled living things acquired hard body parts, bones, vertebral columns mandibles, and teeth is already present. Common in the Paleozoic era were trilobites, crinoids, brachiopod, fish, insect, amphibians, and early reptile. So as you can see in the image, these are the significant events that happened in the Paleozoic era. Second is the Mesozoic era. So the Mesozoic era was important for the fossil remains of the dinosaur and other reptiles that live. However, the Mesozoic era landscape was also occupied by mostly insects, early mammals, plants such as conifers and ferns, fish, and finally flowering plants and early birds. So these are the organisms 
present under the Mesozoic era, and also plants like conifers are already evident. Lastly, under eras, we have the Cenozoic era. So the Cenozoic era is the age or the extinction of the dinosaurs and continues into the present. So the extinction of the dinosaurs at the end of the Mesozoic era opened up vast new habitats and environments for early mammals and birds to adapt to and occupy. So when the dinosaurs become extinct already, so other organisms and other mammals have the chance okay, to occupy the habitat because there are no predators present already in this era. If the units under eons are called era, the units under era is called period. The geologic eras are large interval units of time that encompasses smaller intervals of time called periods. So each of the three eras of the Paleozoic Eon are comprised of several periods and subject to the law of superposition and law of faunal succession. So each of the different eras, la, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic contains their own periods. So let's start first with the Paleozoic era. So in the Paleozoic era, we have seven periods. We have the Cambrian or Division, Silurian, Devonian, Mississippian, Pennsylvanian, and Permian. So what are the different or significant events that occurred in each of the specific periods? Let's start with the first period under the Paleozoic era. We have the Cambrian period. Life forms in the Cambrian period were sponges, segmented worm, trilobites, and brachiopods. Under the Cambrian period, most of the major groups of animals first appear in the fossil record. It is a time of great revolutionary innovation with many major groups of organisms appearing within a span of only 40 years. Next is the Ordovician period. The Ordovician period extended from 490 million to 443 million years ago. So living things under the Ordovician period includes early plants, jawless fishes, bivalve mollusks, Nautilia and gastropods. Next, we have the Silurian period. Under the Silurian period, it extended from 443 million to 417 million years ago. So, living things in the Silurian period were crinoid stems, trilobites, jawless fish, brachiopods fish with loss, freshwater fish, nautilier, gastropods, and lastly, coral reefs. Then we also have the Devonian period. In the Devonian period, it extended from 417 million to 354 million years ago. Living things under Devonian period were ammonites, starfish, corals, crinoid stems, armored fish, sharks, early bony fish, and lastly, early amphibians. So these are the different living organisms under the Vonian period. Then we have also the Mississippian period. The Mississippian period extended from 354 million to 323 million years ago. Living things in the Mississippian period were snails. We also have amphibians, tree ferns, shark. We also have freshwater clams. And in the Mississippian period, trilobites are becoming 
rare and the armored fish became extinct in this period. We have also the Pennsylvanian period. Under Pennsylvanian period, it extended from 323 million to 290 million years ago. Living things under the Pennsylvanian period include spiders, cyads, early reptiles, amphibians, flying insects, and cockroaches. Last, under the Paleozoic era, we have the Permian period. The Permian period extended from 290 million to 248 million years ago. So living things under the Permian period were the conifers, terrestrial reptiles, we also have beetles, we have bugs, freshwater bony fishes, and ammonids. So, at the end of the Permian period, uh, one of the Earth's greatest extinctions occurred. So, the fossil record changed at the, ten, at the end of the Permian period, and a new era, which is the Mesozoic, began with the following. So, under the Mesozoic era, we have these three periods. We have the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous period. Under the Mesozoic era, we have the first period, which is the Triassic period. Under the Triassic period, it extended from 248 million to 216 million years ago. So life form in the Triassic period includes arthropods, turtles, crocodilians, true lizards, bony fishes, sea urchins, marine reptiles, and the therapsids, the first mammal-like reptiles appear also, and also the early dinosaurs. The second period under the Mesozoic era is the Jurassic period. The Jurassic period extended from 206 million to 144 million years ago. So life forms in the Jurassic period were flying reptiles, dinosaurs, earwigs, redwoods, cyads, cycads, ginkgos, cypress, and the early mammalian dicynodonts. So these are the uh, following organisms present in the Jurassic period, but the most common a life form here in the Jurassic period is the age of the dinosaurs. The Cretaceous period was the final period of the Mesozoic era and extended from 144 million to 65 million years ago. So life form in the Cretaceous period includes dinosaurs, flying reptiles, marine reptiles, amphibians, lizards, crocodilians, snake, early birds, and early mammals. So if you look closer to the organism present in the Cretaceous period, they are really dangerous. The Cenozoic era is composed of two periods. We have tertiary and quaternary period. Under tertiary, we have neogene period and paleogene period. So the Cenozoic era is composed of fourfold division named primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. But only the tertiary and quaternary intervals of time are utilized in the modern geologic time scale. So under the Cenozoic era, we have the tertiary period. So in the tertiary period, it extended from 65 million to 2 million years ago. Modern life forms continue to diversify and inhabit the land, the sky, and the ocean. 
So there is an increase already of species of different life forms in the tertiary period. So we have also whales, dolphins, and manatees evolved in marine habitat. Amphibians, lizard, crocodilians, snakes, early deer, antelope, pronghorns, and horses also evolved in the tertiary period. The first elephant-like mammals appeared as did dogs, cats, pigs, and weasels appeared on the tertiary period. That's why in a tertiary period, it is known to be the period of mammals. And last, under the Cenozoic era, we have the Quaternary period. The Quaternary period began approximately 2, mi 2 million years ago and continues into the present. So the notable event in the Quaternary period were the Ice Ages that began 2 million years ago and remain until 10,000 years ago. Life forms during the Quaternary period included the giant ground sloths, giant beavers and mammoth, bison, saber-toothed cats, and human beings. So human beings evolved or is present already under the Quaternary period. The tertiary and quaternary period of the Cenozoic era are further divided into time intervals called epochs. So epochs, as well as geologists and paleontologists, in further specifying the conditions related to a particular time. So the earliest epochs of the Cenozoic era occurred in the tertiary period under the Paleogene. Under the Paleogene, we have the Paleocene. Eocene and Oligocene epoch. Under also the Neogene in the tertiary period, we have Miocene and Pliocene. And lastly, under quaternary period, we have the Pleistocene and Holocene epoch. So currently, the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs are the only two epochs identified in the quaternary period. So the advent of the Ice Age is a significant event that identified the Pleistocene Epoch. So under the Pleistocene Epoch, what we should remember is the Ice Age. And the Holocene Epoch marks the conclusion or the end of Ice Age and the initiation of the modern warmer and drier climate. So what are the events in the other epochs? So in the Miocene Epoch, lasted from 23.8 to 5.3 million years ago in Idaho and was marked by the elephant-like gomphotyr that existed in Hawaii country. Under the Pliocene Epoch, from 5.3 million to 1.8 million years ago, it is uh, marked in Idaho by the appearance of Lake Idaho in the vicinity of Hagerman. So during this epoch in the Pliocene, the horse existed. And in the Pleistocene epoch, um, it is the first epoch of the Quaternary period. And as we mentioned a while back, it is the age or the recent ice age. Okay, that is the event present on that epoch. So let's try to use this geologic time scale to trace the history of humans. So using this geologic uh, time scale, uh, we could uh, determine the history of humans. So a human existed on the Quaternary period under Cenozoic era, under the Panerozoic eon. So that is for Man. For example, um, we will trace the history of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs existed under, for example, the Triassic period, under Mesozoic era, under Panerozoic eon. Okay, so that is how geologists and paleontologists use the geologic time scale. So the geologic time scale is a result of hundreds of years of investigation and remains very much work in progress. So as we try to understand understand the time scale, 
we can see how evolution greatly affects the changes of the environment. So with that, we need to remember that it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And this is very evident on the different events that happened during the Paleozoic to Cenozoic era. With that, we end our discussion and thank you for listening. Again, I am Sir Nestor Jr. Sibalilin and this is for our topic, History of Theater.